What you guys got another video here for you on how to make Windows 11 more secure. Now, whenever you install Windows and you create an account, by default, that account will be administrator for the PC. Unfortunately, this is a major security flaw because it means that your account is now running as an administrator. That means that any type of files you click on, programs you install, it doesn't need any sort of permission because you are the administrator. That means it's just going to go ahead and let that install on the PC. Malware knows this. Trojans, ransomware, rootkits, rats, any of these types of files, which are nasty malicious files that are downloaded off the internet or even coming through your uh, mailbox. Now, when you're doing this on your PC, it means that you are running as administrator. So when you click on it, it's just going to unload its payload on the PC and cause, cause you major problems. So if we look at the computer management here and go to uh, users here, local users and groups, and click on users, you'll see an administrator account in here, which is turned off by default. What we're going to do is enable this feature and put a password on this account and then we're going to make the Brightech account or your user account a standard user account. So let's go ahead and create a password for this administrator account here. So I'm just going to create a new password. It'll give you a little warning, so proceed. And I'm going to put in a password here for this account here. Now you want to make this a reasonably strong password. This is the password that you're going to be putting in any time you install any software or any sort of uh, files that want to install onto the system, it's going to ask for permission first because we're not going to be running as administrator on this PC. So let's go to the command prompt by typing CMD in the search box and open up the command prompt here as administrator. And what we're going to do here is enable the administrator account. So go net space user. Then we need to do some quotation marks here. Then we can type out administrator here as well. That's what we need to do here. So type out administrator, then a quotation mark again, then space, forward slash, active, then colon, and then yes. Then push enter. And now the account has been activated and we now have a password on that administrator account. So let's right click on here and we'll go to computer management again. And what we'll do here is we'll take a look inside the local users and groups here. So let's go ahead and click on local users and groups. Go back into users and you should now see the administrator account is now enabled with a password. And now we have our Brightech account or your user account that you've got. So we're going to go to search here and type control panel and open up the control panel. Once we click on the control panel here, it will open up and we're going to go to user accounts. Inside here, we're going to click on user accounts again, and you can see the Brightec is a local account. It's an administrator account. We want to change this to a standard account. So you need to click on here, change your account type, and this will allow us to change the account type to another type, which will be standard account. The radio button will be in standard, so you just put the radio button in standard and change account type. You should now see the account with local account here. So if we click on the manage another account here, we'll click on this one and you should now see your two accounts. So we've got the administrator local account. This is administrator and it's password protected. We now need to add a password for this account as well. So create a password here. I'm just going to make this a simple password, but you can use the password of your choice. Try to make it a strong password as well. So we're going to go ahead and put a password here for this account and then create that password. And once we've done this, we're all set. We're pretty much set. We just need to change uh, the user account control to a much stronger uh, setting on the Brightech account or your user account here. So go here and we should now see we've got both passworded and they are both local accounts. One's administrator and one's a standard account. So your main account will be a standard account and the administrator one will be literally doing all of the permissions for you. So we're going to go back into control panel here and we're going to go into the user accounts one more time here. I just want to change the user account control here. I forgot to do it. So go back into the change user account control 
So we're going to bump this up to the highest setting here. Always notify me when applications try to install software or I make changes to my computer or Windows settings. So this is set to the highest setting. Say yes to this. And if we go back in here now, we can see that this account has now been set up. So anytime I try to install any software on the main system using my Brightech account, which will be your user account, uh, you will try to install any software or malware gets dropped on the system. You're going to have to have permission from the administrator to do that. And this is the most safest way of running your system. Now, this should be the way it's set by default when you're installed in Windows. It should not be a administrator account. It should be set up in a way where you have to type in your password every single time you make changes to your operating system or system files or whether you are running command prompts or anything like that, you should have to put your password in. Anytime that you go to install software, you should have to put a password in. This is for the ultimate security um, you know, setup, and this is how you should be running your system. So let's go on the internet here, and we're gonna download a piece of software, and we'll download this, and we'll go to install it, and you'll see exactly what happens when we go to install any sort of software or make changes to the operating system. So it'll all come more clear once you see what happens when we do this. So I've now got this piece of software. I'm gonna go and click on it and go ahead and install it on the computer. So let's go ahead and click on this. And before this will allow it to be installed, it's gonna ask permission from the administrator. And you can see the administrator account down here. It's going, you need to put in your password to allow this to install on the system. And this is what we're doing here. So now if this was some really weird file name or something that you don't like that's going to be installed on the PC, you could obviously click no, and it won't be able to set off its payload on the PC without your permission. So you are in more control of things. Now, if you was running this as an administrator, it wouldn't prompt you at all. It would just go ahead and let that install on the system. But what if that was a malicious file or something that you didn't want to be installed on the system? you have a chance now to say no and back out of it. And this is the difference between having your computer run as administrator all the time or having it run as a standard user and having control over things. Any settings on your PC, it wants permission from the administrator. So now you need to put your password in. Now, malware loves to make changes to your computer settings, your security and things like that. So with this setup in place, it will give you an idea of what's going on and it will allow you to say no and that malware will not be able to make changes to your firewall or your operating system or your antivirus programs. So if you're running a system as an administrator as you would do in a normal situation, the malware would drop onto the system, you would click on it and it will automatically just install its payload onto the system. Normally in the Windows files, it will make changes to those files and it will then start to do its damage. Because you are running as administrator, it won't need any sort of pop-up box or permissions. It's already got the permission because you are administrator. Whereas running as a standard user, it can't do its damage because it needs permissions for that to run. And by then, hopefully you would have some sort of idea what this file is and what it's trying to do to your computer you can then say no and it will stop it doing its damage and this is why this setup is so important to you as the uh, user because if you want to protect yourself the best way to do this is to run as a standard user and then you would have administrator who is going to be authorizing any sort of installation of programs any changes to the operating system or any changes to the registry, you can stop it in its tracks immediately by just saying no. And normally because of these programs are just poorly coded, you're gonna get some really weird name coming up and you would know what it's trying to do is malicious and you would stop it. So obviously you are the first line of defense and this is what the most important thing is about your security. It's you, which is the biggest weakest link in, in that chain. So if you secure that, by using a standard user and have a good antivirus and a good firewall, you're not gonna fall foul to any of these attacks. 
Now, if you like this type of content, then check out my YouTube channel. I've got tons of videos on PC builds, how to videos, reviews, all sorts of stuff on this YouTube channel. Check out my playlists on there as well. If you'd also like the content, you may want to consider subscribing, hit the red subscribe button and click the bell for more notifications by clicking all and you'll be notified when I upload new videos. If you want to support me a little bit further, you can always hit the join button to join my YouTube channel's membership and it costs $4.99 a month. You can cancel at any time. You'll get some loyalty badges, some custom emojis, and you'll get some access on uh, my Discord server. And your name will be added to the list at the end of my videos, just as you see these people here that have joined my YouTube members group. Anyway, my name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. I really do appreciate the support, and I'll see you again for another video real soon. Bye for now.